<laughs> okay. So Article 120, there is a body created under the Labor Code known as the National Wages and Productivity Commission. That is a consultative body. Ang sabi nila, consultant or sul-sultant. Ano? To the President regarding wages. At saka sa Kongreso na rin. Now, the composition of which, ito hindi naman tinatanong sa bar exam ito, but remember that the Secretary of Labor is the ex-officio chairman of the National Wages and Productivity Commission. Alamin niya yan kasi yan ang appellate body pag, sa mga desisyon ng Regional Tripartite Wages and Productivity Commission. Kasi in every region, there is a Regional Tripartite Wages and Productivity Commission. Alam ko, alam niya yan. Also known as the Regional Wage Board. Di ba? Okay. So, uh, Secretary of Labor, Director ng NEDA, Director General, no? Etc. Now, Take note of the composition. Hindi na natin hindi discuss. Kaya nyo naman basahin ito, di ba? So, hindi naman tinatanong sa bar exam yan. Ha? Sa tandaan ninyo, ex-officio, ibig sabihin, by reason of his office. Siya ang Secretary of Labor, kaya siya ang Chairman. Okay? Now, in every region, how many regions na ba meron tayo? Panahon ni Pinoy, there were 18 regions. Eh, kaso, pagdating ng Presidente Duterte, dinisolve niya yung isang region. Pwede ba yan? Oh, Presidente lang naman nag-create yan eh. The Negros Island region is no longer existing. Yung Negros Occidental na ang capital ay Bacolod, bumalik na uli sa Region 6, Western Visayas. Yung Negros Oriental, ang capital ay Dumaguete City, ibinalik na uli sa Region 7, Central Visayas, kasama niya ang Cebu, Bohol, at saka yung Siquijor. Okay? Kaya ginawa itong Negros Island region kasi isang isla lang naman yan. Eh. So ginawa isang region. Pagdating ni Duterte, Dinisolve. So, we now have 17 regions. Dahil wala na yung Negros Island region. In all these 17 regions, there is a regional tripartite wages and productivity board. Short name, regional wage board. Okay? So, sino naman ang, nag ang bumubuo sa regional wage board? The regional director of the Department of Labor. Kasi siya, representative ng Secretary of Labor eh. Then the regional director ng NEDA, regional director ng DTI, etc. So anong trabaho nila? Ang trabaho nila ay mag-issue ng wage order. Kung gusto ng iba, i-abolish na raw ang regional wage board. Eh. Bakit? Uh, pangako yan ng isang kandidato eh, sa pagkapangulo. Ha? Siya din yung nangako na mag-jet ski. <laughs> Kaya lang. <laughs> Bakit? Kailangan i-abolish ang regional wage board. Ay problema yan. Kasi pag inabolish mo ang regional wage board, magiging nationalized yung salary. Ano? Katulad sa gobyerno, in the government, you have Republic Act 6758. Ano yon? The Salary Standardization Law. Na ang mga empleyado sa gobyerno, regardless kung saan ka sa gobyerno, basta covered ka ng civil service law, ha? ay meron kang salary grade. And the salary grade would determine how much is your salary every month. For example, ang mga public school teachers, ang salary grade nila is 11. So wherever you are in the country, basta public school teacher 1, kasi may mga kategorya yan eh. Public school teacher 1, salary grade 11. So regardless kung nasa Batanes ka o nasa Sulu ka o tawi, -tawi you will receive a gross payment of 23,000 a month. May mga konting butal. Ano? So 23,000 a month. Regardless kung nasa angka. Whereas kung private school teacher ka sa Metro Manila, chances are you are receiving around 20,000 plus kung hindi barat yung iyong uh, school owner. Ano? Pero pag nasa probinsya ka, like for example in Region 8, Region 10, ay hindi ka susweldo ng, ng 20,000 kasi in every region, there is a regional wage board that fixes the minimum wage. Okay? So pag inabulis natin yung regional wage board, Mana nationalization salary, eh di standardized na. That's one way of declogging Metro Manila. Decongesting Metro Manila. Bakit? Eh kasi nga, let's say, in Metro Manila, the minimum wage is 537 for 8 hours of work. You go to our place in Naga, eh, ang minimum wage doon for the same kind of work ay nasa 380 lang yata. So malaking difference ya, di ba? That's why, Kung gano'n ang trabaho mo, gusto mo dito ka sa Manila magtrabaho. Kasi mas mataas ang minimum wage. Why? 
eh, that's brought about by the regional wage board. Kaya maraming tumatawag sa nananawagan, rather, na i-abolish na ang regional wage board. But how can you abolish the regional wage board? Congress. Only Congress can do that through legislation. So ano ba ang trabaho ng regional wage board? Eh di mag-fix ng wage order fixing the minimum wage. Okay? So yung regional wage board na bin tripartite kaya tripartite kasi nandiyan ang gobyerno, nandiyan ang employer, nandiyan ang labor sector. So magi-issue ng wage order. The wage order in effect will increase the minimum wage in the region. And that wage order shall take effect 15 days from its publication in a newspaper of general circulation. So gaano kadalas ang minsan, hindi ho, gaano kadalas mag-issue ng wage order? Ang sabi ng implementing rules ng uh, book, um, rules of uh, procedure and minimum wage fixing, once in 12 months, okay? So in a year, isang beses lang pwede mag-issue ng wage order. Hindi yan taon-taon na kasi pinagmimitingan pa yan at uh, nag, saka lang sila mag issue ng wage order pag na-determine nila na talagang kailangan. Ang problema na sa general rule, in the event, however, that there are supervening conditions like extraordinary increase in the prices of petroleum products, eh, mag-ano yan eh, mag issue ng another wage order, increasing the minimum wage. That happened, if I remember, if my memory serves me right, in 2012, January, nag-issue ng wage order sa Metro Manila, yung NCR Wage Board, increasing the minimum wage by, I think, 12 pesos, uh, 8 pesos. Okay, so I stay on, kasi January, napakalaki ng 8 pesos, ha? By July, umabot ang presyo ng gasolina, unleaded, the time unleaded ang ginagamit natin, na 67 per liter. So yung regional wage board nag-issue ng another order in July, increasing the minimum wage by 12 pesos. So in a span of 12 months, or less than 12 months kaya, nakadalawang wage orders increasing the minimum wage. But that is extraordinary. Because ordinarily, once in 12 months lamang. Eh kasi naman, kapag ka nag-increase yung mga petroleum products ng presyo nila, eh lahat sumusunod eh. Di ba? One time, after hearing, sabi sa akin nung kliyente, attorney, wala ka pa naman yata ang gagawin kasi mga 10.30 lang natapos yung hearing. Yan, sa Manila City Hall. Eh, tatawid ka lang ng SM Manila eh. May Starbucks, magkape daw muna kami. Oh, doon, hindi ako masyado mahilig magkape. Kasi yung kape daw, nagkukos ng breast cancer. I was told, ah, hindi ko lang punto. Kasi daw yung sobrang kape pindol, kape pisil, etc. Kape pigat. Anyway, hindi ako mahilig magkape. <laughs> Ayaw ko ng kape. Now, ang problema namin sa Starbucks, ang mahal pala ng kape dyan. Ay ko ba't ang mahal ng kape nyo? Sabi nung cashier, ay kasi sir, ang taas na ng presyo ng gasolina. Ay ko sige, huwag mo nalalagyan ng gasolina yung kape ko, ha? baka medyo mura. Anyway, so if the employer or the employee, hindi naman sila parehong masaya eh. Ha? Hindi sila parehong masaya kapag ka may wage order. Bakit? Wage order increasing the salary by 10 pesos. Ikaw si employee, ma mat matutuwa ka ba? Diba? Hindi ka naman masyadong matutuwa. Nagkaroon ng wage order increasing the salary by 12 pesos, si employer hindi rin masaya. Kasi magagastusan siya. Whereas yung employee, hindi rin masaya kasi ang liit-liit. Eh kasi nga, magkaiba sila ng perspective eh. Yung perspective ng employee, yung kanyang sariling pangangailangan. Sa baga, 12 pesos, wala nga masyado magagawa yan in one day. Si employer naman, every day, Ilang empleyado yung mag increase ng 12 pesos per day? At ilang araw yan sa isang buwan? Gaano kalaking pera ang isi-shell out niya? So dapat magkaintindihan sila because if they could not agree, well, they have to appeal the ruling. They have to appeal the issuance of the wage order. Saan nila ia appeal yan? Within 10 calendar days from the date of publication, i-appeal nila doon sa National Wages and Productivity Commission. Okay? Now, ayan, commission. Uh, NWPC yan, i-appeal. Kasi yan yung sabi ko sa inyo kanina, yan yung appellate body. Can they go to the court, regular court, and ask for a TRO to stop the implementation of a wage order? Ang sagot po ay hindi. Under Article 126 of the Labor Code, the regular court 
cannot issue an injunction. Okay? At wala pang exception dito. Now, there are two no injunction rules in the Labor Code. One, Article 126. The regular court cannot issue a TRO or an injunction whether temporary or permanent injunction huh? stopping the implementation of a wage order. That's for so one to Article 126. On the other hand, under Article 266, the regular court cannot issue an injunction to stop the implementation of a CBA provision. Bawal yun. However, in Article 266, there is already an exception. Pag-aaralan niyo yan sa labor relations ninyo and allow me to mention to you the case of Halagenya versus Philippine Airlines. Na ang sabi ng Korte Suprema, kapag ka ang issue dito ay constitutional, hindi yan kayang solusyonan lamang applying the labor code. Kasi i-apply natin yung constitution at saka yung law for the protection of women, our commitment to the uh, convention for the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women o yung CEDAW convention, then the regular court has jurisdiction. Kaya nag-issue ng TR o yung RTC, sabi ng Korte Suprema, valid yan. So there is now an exception under 266. But in Article 126, absolutely wala pa tayong exemption. So, ang pwede lang mag-issue ng injunction, ay ang komisyon, National Wages Protective Commission. But the regular court cannot. At nung panahon ni Justice uh, Panganiban, ang pagkakatanda ko, gusto niyang i-translate sa Pilipino yung mga desisyon ng korte. Eh, ang problema dito, nahirapan sila mag-translate eh, kasi paano daw ita-translate yung um, motion for intervention with prayer for preliminary injunction. That's a valid motion. Eh, gagawin mo Pilipino. Sabi ng mga nakakaalam, ay madali po yan. Ha? Galaw sa pakikialam na may panalangin ng pansamantalang pagpipigil. <laughs> ay kasi temporary injunction eh. Ay okay na yon. Ang masaklap dito pag permanent injunction. Bakit? Pang matagal ang pagpipigil. Abay, delikado tayo dyan. Okay. So, kapag ka nag-issue uh, ng wage order ang wage board, hindi naman yan minamagic. It is not based on miracle. There is a criteria, there are criteria, rather, there are criteria that they have to base their wage order. Number one, the needs of the workers and their families. Kaya nga laging isinilalabas yung on the average, how much does a family of five in Metro Manila need in order to survive daily? Magkakaibang statistics dyan eh. There was a time na ang sabi nung NEDA, 10 thousand kasya daw sa isang buwan. Hala! <laughs> 10,000 pesos, isang buwang gastos ng pamilya. We, <laughs> baka hindi yan, hindi yan itong 24th century, baka 18th century yan. Mm. Di ba? At sabi naman ng Ibon Foundation, 1,000 plus per day. Eh kung isa lang ang nagtatrabaho, 500 pesos lamang kasi hindi niya naman may uwi yung 537 ng buo. Bakit? May babawasing SSS contribution. May wala nang tax kasi minimum wage yan. Eh, di ba? Under the train law, pagka minimum wage earner, wala nang income tax. And then, yung kanyang pag-ibig at PhilHealth contribution. Eh, miyembro pa siya ng union. Ay, di meron pang union dues. O magkano lang may uwi niya out of 537? O di ba ka naman kailangan na natin i-increase? Pangalawa, eh, mag-increase ka nga. Eh, yung industry mo naman, yung mga employers, hindi naman pala kaya na magbayad. Di ba? So kung hindi nila kayo magbayad, aba may problema tayong malaki, baka magsarado yan, lalo ka nawalan. And then comparable wages. So bakit marami nag i sa China? Ay ko sa inyo kanina, cheap labor eh. Di ba? Hindi ka nung pwede magreklamo. Mawawala ka na lang kung makukulong ka. Then requirement for national development. Baka naman kayo sobra na ng taas ng ating minimum wage, matakot na yung mga foreign investors hindi na mag-invest sa atin. Ano? Okay. That is why in the last bar examination, last bar examination, 2019. Okay? Ito yung tanong. Pakibasa nyo muna at uh, I'll be back in two minutes. So, basahin nyo.
Okay, 2019 bar exam. Sa si 2020, wala tayong bar exam, di ba? Upon a review of the rate, wage rate and structure pertaining to its regular rank and file employees, kay corporation found it necessary to increase the hiring rates for employees belonging to the different job satisfaction classification levels to make their salary rates more competitive in the next in the labor market. After the implementation of new hiring salary, Union X, the exclusive bargaining agent of the rank and file employees demanded a similar salary adjustment for the old employees. Kita niyo idea, no? New employees tinasan, pero yung old employees parang hindi. So nag-request ang union. It argued that the increase, uh, increase in hiring rates resulted in wage distortion since it erased the wage gap between the new and old employees. In other words, new employees would enjoy almost the same salary rates as K cons, uh, Corporation's old employees. So now, ang tanong, what is wage distortion? Pagkahaba-haba ng facts, ano? Pero simple lang pala yung uh, tanong, wage distortion. Huh? And second, did a wage distortion arise under the circumstances which legally obligated K Corporation to rectify uh, the wage of its old employees? Explain. Now, yung question na ito, letter B, Uh, upon the initiative of the employer. Eh. So kung sa initiative mo nag-increase ka ng uh, new employee salary, increase mo rin dapat yung old para wala kang wage distortion. Kasi ang under the labor code, it is contemplated that wage distortion would result because there is a minimum wage increase brought about by a wage order. Hindi akin ito, galing sa internet yan. Okay? So, Waste distortion, sagutin muna natin yung letter A question, is a situation. Anong klaseng sitwasyon? There is an increase in the prescribed wage rate. So meaning, yung minimum wage nag-increase. Alam nyo kasi ang problema natin dito. No? Pagka wage order increase, ang nag increase lang yung minimum wage. Kasi pag across the board yan, wala tayong problema. Eh. Mamaya, papaliwanag ko sa inyo. Ha? So the increase resulted in the elimination or severe contraction. Elimination totally, nawala yung wage gap. Eh? Or severe contraction, lumiit na lumiit yung gap between and among employees groups in establishment and you have to add within the same region kasi magkakaiba tayo ng wage board, magkakaiba ng wage order, magkakaiba ng minimum wage. So, it effectively ob obliterate the distinctions embodied in such wage structure based on skills, length of service, take note of them, or logical basis of differentiation. Okay? So ito rin yung mga elemento ng wage distortion pagkahaba-haba ng definition yan under Article 124. So if you cannot memorize the definition, just look at the elements. Okay? So I'll give you an example of wage distortion. Okay. So, employee A, the minimum wage earner, assuming na ang minimum wage niya ay 512. Employee B, medyo matagal-tagal na sa kumpanya, sabi natin kanina, skills, performance, length of service, yun ang mga basis kung bakit may intentional wage distinction. Eh. Seniority, di ba? Kaya nga, length of service. So, 530 na siya. There's an 18 pesos difference. Employee C, 550, so mas mataas na. Baka supervisory na ito. Medyo sip-sip na kayo boss. Ano? Joke lang. Si employee D, ang pinakamataas, managerial. Managerial. Baka pinakasip-sip kayo boss. <laughs> Joke lang. So 600. Ang problema natin sa wage order increase, it will only increase the minimum wage. Kasi kung lahat sila may 17 pesos increase, walang magre-reklamo eh. But that is the effect of a wage order increase it will only increase the salary of the minimum wage earner. It will not increase the salary of those earning above the minimum. Kaya nagkakaroon ka ng problema. Kasi nga, as I told you, kung across the board ang pag-increase dyan, eh, lahat sila may 17 pesos, wala kang wage distortion to talk about. Okay? And since ang nag-increase lamang, ay yung minimum wage earner salary. So between 529 and 530, there is no elimination practically. May difference eh. But there is severe contraction of the wage gap or the wage difference between employee A and employee B. 
So assuming si employee B ay 5 years na, si employee A newly hired, 529 plus 530, ba matutuwa ka ba niyan? Piso lang ang kaibahan niyo. Diba? May nabibili pa ba ang piso ngayon? Bukod sa Mentos daw. <laughs> piso pa ba ngayon niya? Di ko alam. Diba? And take note of the elements of wage distortion according to the court in that case of Pro Bankers Association. Okay? There is an existing hierarchy of position. Pinakita natin sa inyo kanina. There is a significant change in the salary rate of lower pay class. Kasi nga, pag uh, wage order increase, ang nag increase lang yung minimum wage earner eh. Kaya nagkakaroon ka ng distortion kasi tumataas siya without corresponding increase in the next level. So talagang magpapang-abot dyan. Di ba? Hmm. Parang yung naunang bat sa'yo, ay eh, nagbagsak siya na nagbagsak, ikaw nag nagpumasa ng pumasa, ay eh, di magkakalevel na kayo. Di ba? Ayan. And the elimination or distinction between the two levels. Elimination or severe contraction. Kasi minsan di naman na-eliminate, pero anliit na nung gap. Okay? Now, the existence in the same region. Kasi siyempre, hindi mo ikukumpara yung sweldo ng NCR kaysa dun sa sweldo sa region 4A or Calabar Zone. Pinakamalapit na yan na region, okay, region 3, pinakamalapit na mga region siya sa National Capital Region, di ba? Okay. Now, hindi lang naman noong 2019 tinanong yan. Itinanong ito noong 2009 also. Eh, kail anong tanong noong 2009 bar exam? What is wage distortion? Can a labor union invoke wage distortion as a valid ground to go on strike? And what procedural remedies are open to workers who seek correction of wage distortion? So ito ngayon, how do we correct wage distortion? Wage distortion can be corrected depending on the nature of the establishment. If it is organized, by now, alam nyo ang kaiba ng organized, saan organized, di ba? Pag-organized, there is a union operating, as I already told you earlier. If it is unorganized, there is no union operating. Okay? So if there is a union, the employer and the union should negotiate. E eh, kung di sila magkasundo, you proceed to the grievance machinery. All grievances must be submitted to the grievance machinery. And the grievance machinery must resolve all grievances under Article 276 of your Labor Code within seven calendar days. If the grievance remains unresolved, they have to be submitted to voluntary arbitration. And after voluntary arbitration, siyempre, alam nyo na ang kasunod. Paano yun? E di pupunta ka na sa Court of Appeals. Okay? Mag-aralan nyo yan under Article 273 hanggang 277. Eh? So antayin nyo na lang sa labor relations. Now, what if it is unorganized? The solution could be found in the codal provision, Article 124. If it is unorganized, the employer and the worker shall endeavor to correct the distortion. Wala namang kaibahan. Kaya lang ito, workers, kasi wala silang union eh. Pag organized, may union na magsasalita para sa workers. Di ba? That's important. So, pahabing a, a labor union. Then, Pagka ang dispute ay hindi nagkasundo ang employer at yung employee, they can seek the assistance of the National Conciliation Mediation Board. O ito na, pumasok na yung panibagong agency na naman ng Labor Department. Ano yan? NCMB. Ang problema ng NCMB, from the name itself, Conciliation Mediation, it cannot give you an award. NCMB is not an award-giving body. Buti pa nga ang like ko sinasabi. Buti pa ang MMDA. Eh. Nag-a-award ng best actor eh. Diba? <laughs> Pagka may film festival. Pero itong NCMB, Conciliation Mediation, eh, hindi pa rin nagkasundo. Within 10 calendar days, pag hindi nagkasundo, adalin na yan sa NLRC. Anong gagawin sa NLRC? Compulsory arbitration. Because there are two kinds of arbitration in your labor code, hindi ba? Voluntary arbitration and compulsory arbitration. So you have voluntary arbitrators and you have compulsory arbitrators. Voluntary arbitrators are those um, accredited by the board. Sinong board? NCMB. Or if they are not accredited by the board, they are chosen by the parties to ACBA for them to become their voluntary arbitrators. Or pag marami, panel of voluntary arbitrators, hindi ba? Now, eh, sino naman ang compulsory arbitrators? Natural, yung regional director ng Department of Labor. Eh? Yung Secretary of Labor. Okay? 
yung Bureau of Labor Relations, Labor Arbiter, NLRC, at yung mga korte natin, they are compulsory arbitrators and their jurisdiction is mandated by law. Okay? As to the question of whether or not wage distortion can be a strikeable issue, the court is saying no. You cannot have a valid strike because of wage distortion alone. Diba? Ngayon, kung yung wage distortion nyo ay sa tingin nyo unfair labor practice na, kaya kayo um, inaapi kasi kayo ay miyembro ng union, baka sakali hindi wage distortion kundi unfair labor practice. Because if you may recall, there are only two valid grounds, in fact three, no? dadagdag natin yung union busting. There are only three valid grounds for a valid strike. Ano yun? Bargaining deadlock. Economic uh, dispute ito eh. Unfair labor practice and the worst form of labor practice yung union busting. And what is union busting? Sabi ng Korte Suprema, in that case of uh, PIMCO Employees Union, ha? ang sabi ng Korte Suprema, itong union busting is the act of the employer in determining the services of the officers or leaders of the union. Natural, the very existence of the union is at stake. So, mag-strike ka, di ba? Ngayon, you are free to bargain with your employer. That's the reason why you have your union. Right? You bargain with your employer. Okay? However, in bargaining with the employer, you are asking not only the minimum. Kasi, alam nyo, pag nag-bargain kayo, humingi kayo ng mas mataas. Because in private sector employment, the law only provides for the minimum because the law would like to empower the employer and the representatives of the employee to enter into an agreement that is above what the law provides. Kaya meron kayong collective bargaining. At pag nagkasundo, collective bargaining agreement. Eh nakipag-bargain ka, gusto mo lang minimum, eh di masaya si employer. Bakit? Kahit hindi ka naman mag-bargain eh. Bibigay ni employer yan kasi minimum yan eh. Di ba? Oh, whereas in the government, you do not negotiate. Huh? Oh, wala kayong collective bargaining agreement. Meron lang kayong collective negotiation agreement. You cannot bargain with the law. You can only negotiate. Okay? But when you bargain, do not ask for a very high proposal or do not give a very high proposal. Why? Baka naman kayo maakosa ng unfair labor practice na ang tawag ay blue sky bargaining. Ano yung blue sky bargaining? E tingnan nyo yung sky kapag ka walang clouds. Napakataas, di ba? Kulay blue. So, blue sky bargaining is a proposal that is unreasonable. Very high. O naman itatapat ni employer. Uh, gusto mo 1,000, for example, minimum wage increase, 1,000 per day. <gasps> Ang taas niyan. E, 537 na sa dagdag na 1,000. Hmm. Sabi ni employer, o oh, sige, 1,000, o oh, 10 pesos. Take it or leave it. Natawag niya doon, that is called bulwarism. Kaling kay Lemuel Bulwer ng uh, General Electric, ano? na at any time na manghihingi ang kanyang employees ng increase, ang sasabihin niya, this is the last and best offer I could give you, take it or leave it. Ay, unfair labor practice yan. Ba't pa kayo negotiate kung hanggang doon na lang pala talaga ang gusto? Di ba? So the reason why you bargain, because you would like to meet halfway. Give and take. Okay? Now under Article 127, this is another no diminution rule. There are two non-diminution rules in the Labor Code. One is Article 100 and the other one is this one, Article 127. Already done with 100. No? So we now discuss 127. Paano ito? Yung wage order na inisyo na Regional Wage Board ay magtataas dapat yan at hindi magbababa. Okay? Kasi minsan, meron tayong uh, legislated wage increase. But I think the last time nagkaroon ng legislated wage increase in the Philippines was 1989. Tagal na nun, ha? 1989. Ilan taon na ito? Oh, wala na kayo. Mga 31 years na? 32. Okay. Magiging mahirap mag-compute, eh, no? So, may mga pagkakataon, i-apply natin ito by necessary implication. There are instances na meron kayong collective bargaining agreement. In the collective bargaining agreement, habang ipinapatupad siya, nagkaroon ng wage order increase as what happened in the case of Mekawayan College versus Drilon. Doon sa kanilang CBA, for example, merong 
wage increase na 15 pesos. So nung in-implement yung CBA nila, biglang nag-issue ng wage order, increasing the minimum wage by 10 pesos. Ha, example lang yan. So sure about the figures. Sabi ng uh, employer, yung may kawain, ka, may kawain college sa union nila, ayun na lang i-implement natin yung nasa CBA. Hindi na tayo mag implement ng wage uh, order increase kasi madudoble. Anyway, mas mataas yun nasa CBA natin kaysa doon sa uh, wage order ng Regional Wage Board. Eh, sabi ng union, natural, hindi papayag yung union. Di ba? Eh, sabi na, lugi kami. Eh, ano ba ang obligation ninyo under the CBA contract? Anong obligation ninyo under the uh, wage order? Law. Di ba? Kasi it has the force and effect of a law. Eh. So, under the civil code, I remember correctly your civil code uh, article 1157 there are different sources of obligations diba one is law contract acts and omissions prohibited by law delict quasi quasi delict or whatever oh eh ano ba ang obligation what is the source of obligation of the wage increase in the CBA contract CBA is a contract between the employer and the union for the terms and conditions of employment. So you entered into a contract increasing the salary under the CBA at the contractual obligation. Masok, di ba? And then nagkaroon ng minim minimum wage increase because of a wage order issued by the wage board. Should the employer choose which to implement? According to the court, no. You have to comply with both obligations. One arose out of contract and the other arising from law. Kaya ang ginagawa dyan, pagka nagbabargain, ano, one of my clients nagbargain, ini-insist dapat na yung CBA provision on increase shall include future wage order increase. Why? Kasi yung contract nyo, yung CBA ninyo, pwede nyo i-waive yung ibang rights ninyo. Diba? Kasi contract lang naman yan. Rights may be waived, provided the waiver is not contrary to law. So, kaya lang mahirapan kayo mag-bargain kasi siyempre ang union hindi niya i-wave yan. Eh, you do something. That's why it's called bargaining. Ha? Ang sabi dyan, kapag ka hindi kayo pumayag, ang tanong dyan, eh di ba baba namin yung wage, or wage increase dito sa CBA? Kasi ina-anticipate natin meron kang wage order increase. Sigurado ka ba na magkakaroon ng wage order increase? O, oh, eh di hindi ka nakakasiguro, eh di tanggapin mo na. Kasi pag wala kayong provision na ganun, na yung CBA, yung mga increases ninyo sa CBA, hindi kayo naglagay ng clause na included na yung wage order increase. Abay, mapupwersa kayo dyan na mag-comply with the CBA and comply also with the wage order increase because they arose out of two different sources of obligations. As we said, one is from a contract under the CBA and the other is from a law. Yun yung uh, wage order increase. Okay? So maliwanag yan ha. Importante yan pagka nagpa-practice na kayo. Either you are for the union or for the employer. Kasi ako, I've been handling uh, cases for the employer, for the union, and for the employees. Kaya medyo familiar tayo dyan. For the past 16 years already. <laughs> Diba? Kaya lang alam nyo, mahirap mag-practice sa labor kung ang kliyente ninyo ay employees, lalo na yung mga natanggal sa trabaho. Kasi contingency yan. Eh. And there were instances na magaling lang kausap kapag kakailangan yung servisyo mo. Eh. Sasabihin na, Tony, wala akong pambayad. O oh, sige, pag nanalo na lang tayo. Pag nanalo na, hindi ka na babalikan, hindi ka na ititext. Pag tinext mo, sagot sa'yo, who you? Diba? Kaya ako, nadala na ako eh. Yung pagtingin ko, contingency at hindi matinong kausap at nakasagot na ako na oo, hirap na mabawiin, ay nire-require ko nila na mag-iwan ng panyo na bagong gamit at saka tatlong hibla ng buhok. I tell you, effective. Anyway, so puntahan natin yung Article 128. I think it's one of the opening uh, topics that we discuss. Ano? The exercise of police power by the state through the Secretary of Labor and Employment. So under Article 128, ito po ay jurisdiction that belongs to the regional director as the representative of the Secretary of Labor in the region. So he shall have access to employers' records and premises and take note at 
any time of the day or night whenever work is being undertaken. So sabi natin kanina kahit na hating gabi, kung sa tingin niya nababiolate yung mga minimum standards of employment conditions, minimum standard laws, aba, eh, labor standards laws, eh, pwede siya mag-inspect. Kasi nga, moto proprio ito eh. At pag nakita niyan, or may complainant, pwede naman. No. Ay may nag-complain, o kaya walang complainant. mag issue siya ng inspection order. Okay? Inspect niya yung mga premises. Ang sabi ng Republic Act 10,028, magkaroon ng breastfeeding station. May nag-sabi uh, ng Department of Labor or Regional Office, teka, wala yata kayong breastfeeding station, ha? Kasi alam nyo, breast milk is best for babies up to 50 years old and beyond. Ay, sorry, sorry. Up to 2 years old and beyond. Kaya sabi ng Republic Act 10,028, ah, yung promotion of breastfeeding, dapat merong kayong breastfeeding station. Ah, lactation station. So nag-inspect. Ay, wala. Walang lactation station. So ang susunod dyan, i-issuehan ka ng compliance order. Yung compliance order, dalawang pwede mong gawin. Either mag-comply ka para matapos na and you show proof of compliance within 10 calendar days or i-appeal mo. You appeal. Saan ka mag-appeal? Secretary of Labor within 10 calendar days. At yung mga grounds mo for appeal, number one, ito. There is prima facie. Diba yung prima facie, hindi facie yan. Prima facie. Evidence of abuse of discretion. Hindi grave abuse. Ha? Abuse of discretion lamang. Or The order was secured through fraud, coercion, or graft and corruption. But you have to prove na talagang there was graft and corruption. Yung delikado yan. Then, the appeal is made purely on uh, questions of law. So, pure questions of law. Or, there are serious errors in the findings of facts which were committed, if not corrected, would cause grave and irreparable damage or injury to the appellant. Okay? So, you appeal that to the Secretary of Labor. 10 calendar days. You have to cite at least one of these grounds for appeal. Because if you do not cite at least one of them, then your appeal may be dismissed for lack of merit. Okay? So ito ngayon, bigyan ko kayo ng illustration. Ha? You can take a picture of this. Kasi alam nyo, nung ako ay nag-aaral pa ng batas, eh, itong nagre-review for the bar katulad nyo. Pag di ko maintindihan, dinodrawing ko eh. Hindi ako magaling mag-drawing. Kaya lang gumagawa tayo ng diagram para mas madaling intindihan. So isa sa mga ginawa ko ng diagram ay itong diagrams, itong Article 128 at saka 129. Eh? At saka dun sa Article 229, yung appeal. Eh? At saka dun sa um, voluntary arbitration. You can uh, look for these diagrams dun sa YouTube channel. You can search. No? Okay. So ano nakalagay dito? So nagkaroon ng compliance or inspection order. Si employee either mag-comply o mag-file ng appeal Kaso, ayun yung mag-comply. So, nag-appeal siya. Or, under Article 128, Paragraph B, there is the so-called contested case. Diba? Napakahaba ng 128B. Basahin nyo na lamang at kulang ang oras natin pag binasa natin pare-pareho yan. So, contested case ang tawag dyan. Ang ibig sabihin, nag-issue ng inspection order or compliance order as the case may be, ang sasabihin ng employer, hindi ito po pwedeng summary procedure lang. Summary hearing lang ito eh. Kailangan kasi na mag-present ng mga ebidensya, ng mga documents, etc. So ang sasabihin ng uh, regional office o sige, contested case yan, i-refer natin sa labor arbiter. So pwede yung referral para doon kayo mag-hearing. Otherwise, i-appeal mo na lang. So mag-comply ka, i-contest mo, or i-appeal mo sa Secretary of Labor. Nag-rule ang Secretary of Labor. Ang problema, it shall become final and executory within 10 calendar days. So kaya, mag-MR ka. Within 10 calendar days. Yung MR 10 na yan, 10 days yan. Hindi ko lang nailagay yung days. <laughs> okay. Ngayon, dininay na secretary, so mag-MR ka. Kasi ang gagamitin mo going to the Court of Appeals ay Rule 65, in which you have 60 calendar days. Ang sabi ng Korte Suprema, very basic ito, not paulit-ulit na sinasabi, Before you can utilize the remedy of certiorari under Rule 65, you have to show that there is no plain, available, or speedy remedy under the ordinary course of law. If you still have a remedy called motion for reconsideration, hindi ka nag-MR, nag-certiorari ka kaagad, dismiss yan because it was filed prematurely 
eh, you fail to exhaust all administrative remedies. Okay? So exhaust all administrative remedies before you avail of the remedy of certiorari under Rule 65. Another thing that you have to remember, if the award includes monetary amount, there is a monetary award, and you file a petition for certiorari, the filing of certiorari will not stop the running of the period. It will not stay the running of the period. Therefore, the winning party can execute the judgment, the monetary part, even pending appeal. So para ma-stop mo yung pag-execute, you have to ask for an injunction. A TRO following Rule 58 of the Rules of Court. Okay? Uh, so, pag in-issue ka ng TRO, well and good, hindi siya maka-execute. Ang problema, hindi nag-issue ng TRO. Kahit na may certiorari ka, walang TRO, tuloy ang takbo niyan, eh makakapagpa-execute sila pag nag naging final and executory. So, from the Court of Appeals, ang kamalas malasa, natalo pa rin. Ano? Ang gagawin mo na lang dyan, mag-MR ka from the Court of Appeals decision, and then you file a petition for review on certiorari, which is an ordinary appeal, again on pure questions of law. Just remember, the Supreme Court is not a trier of facts. Diba? So, pure questions of law. So, dalawang certiorari magagamit mo. From uh, Secretary of Labor to Court of Appeals, 65. Certiorari yan, special civil action. From the Court of Appeals to the Supreme Court, 45. Petition for review on certiorari, but this time you only have 15 calendar days. Okay? Baliwanag tayo. Now, Ito yung tanong noong 2018 bar exam. Pagkahaba-haba, ano? Hmm. Due to his employer's dire financial situation, Nicanor was prevailed upon by his employer to voluntarily resign. Eh? <laughs> Paano naging voluntary yung pinilit ka lang mag-resign? Eh, nag siya eh. So in exchange, he demanded payment of salary differentials, 13th month pay, and financial assistance as, as promised by his employer. So your management promised to pay him as soon as it is able to pay off all its retrenched rank and file employees. Okay? Parang naulit yung rank and file, no? Yeah. Five years later, and before management was able to pay Nekanor uh, the promised amount to him, he died of heart attack. So yung kanyang widow, si Nori, ganda pangalan na, Nekanor at saka Nori, filed money claim before the NLRC including interest, etc. Diba? Dahil may pangako eh. Kaya naman, nangako na nga eh. Now, the employer filed a motion to dismiss on the grounds that A, NLRC does not have jurisdiction over money claims. And B, the action has prescribed. Oh, maliwanag eh. So, sinabi na kaagad ko ano mga issues. So, ang tanong, does the NLRC have jurisdiction to award money claims including interest on the unpaid amount? Nasagutin natin yan using Article 129. Now, assuming that the NLRC has jurisdiction, has the action prescribed? Okay? Ang sagot, prescribed na. Kasi under Article 306 of the Labor Code, eh, pag money claims lang, they prescribe in three years. Eh, wala naman siyang kiniklaim na reinstatement. Hindi eh. ba? Patay na paano kung pa marireinstate? Oo. Oh. Ay, di nag-prescribe na talaga dahil more than three years na yun. After five years, ang sabi Oh, five years later. What the prescribed na yan? Now, ang tanong, may jurisdiction ba ang NLRC? And question na, letter C, may Nicanor spouse successfully claim additional damages as a result of the alleged undue pressure and influence. Well, that is far-fetched. Mahirap patunayan yan. Lalo na't patay na yung tao. <laughs> diba? Unless may kukonek niya na yung kamatayan ay dahil dyan. Eh, teka muna, eh, voluntarily tinanggap niya yung resignation. Eh. Hindi lang talaga tumupad sa pangako ito eh. Okay? So pwede niya sigurong kasuhan, civil case for damages, non-fulfillment of promise. Okay? Pero yung money claims, eh, nag-prescribe na ho ito. Now, as to the jurisdiction, take a look under Article 129. Article 129, money claims ito. No? Basically, ang tinatanong doon, money claims. Eh. So, money claims, general rule and jurisdiction sa, uh, sa regional office. Provided the following elements are present. The claim must arise from employer-employer relationship. Tama naman, employer-employer relationship. Eh. Dito, regional director may jurisdiction in the NLRC. 
Number two, the claimant is no longer employed. Pinanggal na eh. Nag-resign eh. And does not seek reinstatement. Kasi if the complainant is still seeking reinstatement, that's the time na NLR. Kasi illegal dismissal yun eh. Termination dispute yun. Maliwanag. Now, the aggregate amount of the claim does not exceed 5,000. Yan yung kaso ng Broken Share Memorial Hospital. So take note of these requirements. Kasi pag nawala daw yung isa dyan, citing the same case of Broken Share Memorial Hospital, in the absence of any of the three requisites, the labor arbiter shall have exclusive original jurisdiction. So ang tanong natin, magkano ba yung kiniklaim niya? And going back to the question, there is no specified amount. Diba? So kaya ang isasagot ninyo dyan, if the money claim does not exceed 5,000, then NLRC has no jurisdiction. But if the money claim exceeds 5,000, the labor arbiter acquires jurisdiction under Article 224. NLRC kasi kasama dyan yung labor arbiter, di ba? So, labor arbiter ang first instance, ang appellate body, NLRC. But in general, ang tawag, NLRC. Bira naman ang nag-isay file to the labor arbiter. Lagi sinasabi, NLRC. So, yan yan, di ba? Wala tayong concurrent jurisdiction dito. Paliwanag na kapag ka 5,000 and below, regional office. Above 5,000, ay, hindi labor arbiter na ang may jurisdiction dyan. Hindi ba? However, kapag ka ang involved ay kasambahay, okay? regardless of the amount of the claim, the regional office acquires jurisdiction because of Section 37 of Republic Act 10361, also known as Batas Kasambahay. Okay? So, Republic Act 10361, Batas Kasambahay, anong sabi ng Section 37? All labor-related disputes shall be elevated to the Department of Labor Regional Office having jurisdiction. Eh, yung money claims ng kasambahay, is it labor-related? Yes. Kasi, nalba, hindi siya binayaran ng kanyang minimum wage. Eh, ang minimum wage ng kasambahay sa Metro Manila ngayon, ha, ay 5,000 pesos per month. 5,000! Opo. Patatlong buwan siya hindi binayaran. Dalawang buwan na lang. 10,000. O ngayon, hindi siya binayaran. Money claim siya. O, dapat yan. Kay labor arbiter na. Paalo yung Article 229, di ba? Kasi, more than 5,000. Problem is, you have a new law. Republic Act 10361. E labor related din yan. O, hindi kay regional director pa rin. Hindi kay labor arbiter. But assuming, dahil itong si Inday ay nagbabasa ng kanyang labor code, ano? So nakita niya, eh teka muna, 2 months na akong di binabayaran. Lagpas na ito sa 5,000. So dapat kay labor arbiter ko nadadalhin. Should the labor arbiter dismiss that? The answer is no. Because you have Article 234 of the Labor Code. As amended by Republic Act 10396, ano yun? Mandatory conciliation. At ipinapatupad ito ng Department of Labor through the so-called SENA, Single Entry Approach. Ano ba yung single entry approach? Nag-file ka ng kaso. Walang jurisdiction. Si arbiter, no? Kay arbiter din nila. The arbiter has no jurisdiction. The arbiter should not dismiss that. He should conduct mandatory conciliation. Okay? Under the principle of single entry approach. Department Order 107, Series of 2010. Anong gagawin ni labor arbiter? Pagkakasunduin niya. And he's given a mandatory period of 30 calendar days within which the party should agree amicably. Pag nagkasundo, the case is disposed based on the agreement of the parties. Now, the parties could not agree. Ha? They could not agree. O kaya, bago pa dumating yung 30 calendar days, sabi nung one or both parties, hindi kayo magkakasundo. Ano ang gagawin ni labor arbiter? I-refer niya ito dun sa regional office because it is the body who has jurisdiction. And vice versa. Baka din nila kay regional director, eh, wala naman siyang jurisdiction. Magsay na ka muna. Mandatory conciliation. Pag di nagkasundo, that's the time i-refer mo to the agency, tribunal, or body who has jurisdiction over that case. So, ang bottom line, mga kapatid, at kapanalig sa panampalataya, you can no longer have a case dismissed in labor if the ground is jurisdiction or lack of it. Kasi meron kang mandatory conciliation, that is the beauty of Republic Act 10369, uh, 10396, 
Republic Act 10396, reviving eh? Article 234 of the Labor Code. Dati kasi Article 228 yan eh. No? Na wala na yan eh. Tinanggal na yan eh. But under Republic Act 10396, ibinalik yung mandatory conciliation. Okay? At as amended, naging Article 234 siya ngayon. So where do you appeal the decision of the regional director under Article 229? Under Article 129, I should say. 229 yung dating 223. Ano? So, i-appila mo ito sa NLRC within 5 calendar days. Kaya walang masyado nag a dito eh. Bakit? Imagine yung amount lang na involved ay 5,000 or less. And you only have 5 days to file your appeal to the NLRC. Eh, mas mahal pag gagastusin mo sa abogado mo eh kung mag-file ka ng appeal, kaya ang ginagawa nila dyan, ay eh magbayad ka na lang. Huwag ka na mag-appeal. 5,000 lang naman yan eh. <laughs> Kasi pag over 5,000, it should be it should be under the jurisdiction of the labor arbiter. Yan di ba? Okay. So, kaya walang masyado nag a -appeal. Now, let me present to you again <clears throat> a diagram. So, many claims, ano? Regional director. Pagka may order, you have to appeal to the NLRC. So there are two cases now that can be appealed to the NLRC. One, the orders of the, two orders rather, orders of the labor arbiters. Siyempre, under Article 224, ah, ang appeal mo yan, under Article 229, ay sa NLRC. And under Article 129, the decisions of the regional director In simple money claims under Article 129, appealable sa NLRC. Pero, five calendar days lamang. Kaya nga, ang sinasabi ko, wala ka masyadong appeal dyan. Bakit? E eh, kaysa mag-appeal ka pa, magbayad ka na lang, 5,000 lang naman ang involved. Eh. <laughs> Mas mahal pa ibabayad mo sa abogado mo, pagpapagawa ka ng appeal. Pero alam nyo, in practice, may mga employers, no? na in my experience, may mga employers na mas gusto pa nilang gumasto sa abogado gumasto sa filing fee kaysa bayaran yung employee. Ako pag ganyan, kinakausap ko na lang. Eh, boss, mas malaki pa ibabayad mo sa akin kaysa dun sa employee, arreglohin mo lang. Eh, may mga employers na sumusunod, may mga employers na ayaw, matigas ang ulo. Pero sa employer, sabi ko, settle na lang natin. Kasi around, at that time, mga around 10 million lang naman yung involved na award dun sa mga more than 30 employees. Sabi ko, settle na natin. Eh, ayaw. Eh, kasi nga naman, mahal, malaki yung 10 million eh. Hmm. Umapila. Ayun, pag-apila sa Court of Appeals, naging 15 million yata. <laughs> sa kami bumabalik sa akin. Actually, pinag-withdraw ako doon. Eh. Kasi nga, hindi kayo magkasundo sa strategy. Sabi ko, arregluhin na. Kasi nakikita ko na hindi talaga talo talaga eh. Alam mo naman yan, mar mararamdaman mo yan. At based on facts, based on law, alam mo kung talo o hindi. So yung advice ko, na po, isettle na natin at the level of the NLRC. Kasi panalo kami sa arbiter, pagdating sa NLRC, talo kami. So nag-award, mga around, uh, nung kinompute, mga around 10 million. Sabi ko, settle na natin. May get uh, 20 o 30 yata yung mga complainants. So, tingin ko talagang matatalo. Pagdating sa NLRC, talo. Eh, i-appeal daw sa Court of Appeal. Sabi ko, wag na. Eh, di pinag-withdraw ako. Eh, di nag-withdraw naman ako. Pagdating sa Court of Appeal, sabi ko, increase pa yung award kasi nagtagal, di ba? So, naging 15 million yata. Yun, tinatawagan ako ulit. Ako, sabi ko, pasensya na, hindi ako bumabalik sa ex, eh. <laughs> <laughs> at ang gusto ako gagawa nung, nung uh, motion for reconsideration. Saka walang masyado magagawa ang motion for reconsideration. All it can do is to delay the time of payment. But we cannot uh, do anything para ma-reverse pa yan. Okay? Hmm. Yun. So, mas malaki ang babayaran niya. <laughs> Kahit daw magkano, singiling ko para lang gawin ko yung MR. Saka ko hindi ako mabalik sa, sa X eh. <laughs> Well, depende. <laughs> Ngayon. So, mag-MR ka muna sa NLRC. Eh? Pag nag-MR ka sa NLRC na deny, eh syempre pupunta ka na sa Court of Appeals using the same procedure, Rule 65. Ba? You have 60 calendar days. Eh syempre, kung may monetary award, kasi nga money claims eh, eh di mag-file ka ng TRO under Rule 58. Pag hindi ka napagbigyan, aba, they can execute pending appeal. And then, that's the time you go to the Supreme Court pag na-deny yung, yung MR mo sa Court of Appeals. You go to the Supreme Court this time, katulad din nung nauna, Rule 45, 
and you only have 15 calendar days. Petition for review on certiorari. Okay? In 2009 bar exam question, it was asked, true or false? Eh? Sabi dyan, the visitorial and enforcement power, true or false yan, pero ipapaliwanag mo yung answer mo, gandang true or false. No? The visitorial and enforcement power of the regional director of the Department of Labor to order and enforce compliance with labor standards laws can be exercised even when the individual award or claim exceeds 5,000. Marami ditong nagulumihanan ng mga barista. Bakit? Teka, pagka 5,000, more than 5,000, ah, labor arbiter yan. Mali. Tingnan niyo yung naunang tanong. The visitorial and enforcement power, yun nga, napakaliwanag eh. So pag visitorial and enforcement power, kahit mag-exceed siya ng 5,000, eh, ang jurisdiction ay naroroon pa rin sa regional director. That's the case of Valladares versus Peak Ventures. Kasi dito sa Valladares na ito, mga security guard, if I remember correctly, mga gwardiya ang involved dito. So dahil hindi sila binabayaran ng mga labor standards benefits, may underpayment of minimum wage, overtime pay hindi binayaran, night shift differential pay, holiday pay, naku, marami kayong matli tutuklasan na ganyan. Marami mga agency ng mga gwardiya, hindi nagbabahid ng tama. Ang duty ng ordinary gwardiya, 12 hours. Pagkatas ang bahayad sa kanya, less than the minimum. Kasi daw wala silang overtime pay dapat. Ay nako, kay gwardiya kay hindi, dapat may overtime pay yan. Pag above po, uh, 8 hours na ang trabaho sa isang araw. Ay pero may 12 hours, walang overtime pay. O so nasilip, nag-file ang kaso. Mabot ng mahigit 5 milyon yata. Ang award dito kasi walo silang gwardiya or mas mahigit pa. Ha? Sabi ng employer, teka muna, eh, more than 5,000 na ito. So dapat, ang jurisdiction now would go to the labor arbiter. Hindi na ho kayo, regional director. Sabi na sa Korte Suprema. Sabi ng Korte Suprema, alam mo, kahit na yan ay more than 5,000, kasi ang involved dito ay visitorial and enforcement power, the, the amount is immaterial. The amount is only material if it is pure money claims. Eh maliwanag naman na sinabi na visitorial and enforcement power. So there is no amount that is uh, considered as threshold. In other words, walang jurisdictional amount pag Article 128 ang applicable. The jurisdictional amount of 5,000 is only applicable if you are invoking and filing a case under Article 129. If it is Article 128, the amount is immaterial. Or, kung gusto mo na ipasa ito doon kay labor arbiter, i-contest mo. In which case, hindi naman niya kinontest. Di ba? So, kung hindi niya kinontest yan, hindi may jurisdiction ang regional director. The best that you can do is not to question the jurisdiction, but rather appeal the decision to the Secretary of Labor. Kaya lang alam nyo, pagka-abogado ka kasi, lahat ng sulok na yan, lahat yan, ng aspects, titingnan mo eh. Ha? Na baka sakali makalusot. In fact, may mga abogado na pati yung MCL compliance number, tinitingnan eh. Ay, totoo naman. Kasi nag-file ng uh, pleading, ano, under Bar Matter 1922 as amended by Bar Matter 1992, ay kailangan ilagay sa pleading yung ating MCL compliance or exemption number. In my case, I am putting their exemption number kasi exempted tayo. Ang problema, ang tinatanggap na lang ngayon, ay compliance or exemption number 6 and 7. May mga abogado na nagpa-file ng pleading compliance number 5 pa or exemption number 5. O hindi na pwede yun. So pati yung sinisilip, ay dapat lang. Ha? Kasi yan din ang mga itinuturo natin sa MCLE. So this week, uh, marami tayong MCLE at marami pong mga darating in the future. So pagka kayo ay pumasa sa bar exam, and I know you will, ay magkikita-kita pa rin naman tayo sa MCLE. Di ba? Don't worry, isa shout out ko kayo sa MCLE kahit na online. <laughs> okay. So, uh, the next in line is our discussion of Article 130 and 131. Yung original na 130, women are not allowed to work at night time. 131, of course, ay exceptions. Now, nagkaroon ka ng Republic Act 10151. Ni repeal yung articles 130 and 131 because 
sabi, discriminatory yan against the women, di ba? At dinagdagan yung article ng Book 3. So kaya hanggang 161 na ngayon yung Book 3 ng Labor Code. Why did the, uh, the, the Congress do that? Because, accordingly, yung pagbabawalan mo yung babae na magtrabaho sa gabi, pero yung lalaki, hindi mo naman pinagbabawalan magtrabaho sa gabi, that is discriminatory against the women. Di ba? Kasi may mga babae na ang trabaho talaga cannot be done effectively during daytime. Gabi lang talaga pwedeng gawin eh. Ano yun? Ay, yung mga call center. <laughs> hindi naman yung mga manananggal o mga suwang. Ano? Kasi reklamo ng kongreso, mayroon daw isang module ng mga bata. Ang definition ng aswang ay isang tao na nakikipag naghahanap ng mga kaseks niya pag gabi. Tama ba yun? Baka hindi aswang yun. <laughs> mga sex maniac yun. <laughs> e nakalagay dun sa module eh. Kaya nagalit ang kongreso. So reviewin ang mga modules na yan. Eh mga bata ang gagamit. Buti sana kung law students, okay lang, di ba? Eh mga bata. Okay. So isa pa sa constitution natin ay eh, grabe ang protection for women eh. That's why sabi nga nila, be proud you are men. Why? The men of today will be the women of tomorrow. <laughs> At diba? Ayan. So kaya, may commitment tayo dun sa convention for the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women. Also known as the Sidaw Convention. Kaya yung dating 132, siya na ngayon ang Article 130. These are now the facilities for women. Okay? Ayan, no? Uh, ano naman yan? Uh, purely reading matters, di ba? Bigyan sila ng upuan, bigyan ng separate toilet, yung mag-establish ng nursery na under 10, 000, Republic Act 10,022, hindi lamang nursery, kundi breastfeeding station. Ha? At ang ating appropriate age for retirement, dito ibinasi yung halaga niya versus Philippine Airlines. Pero sabi ng Korte Suprema, discriminatory. Ha? Walang kaibahan ng babae sa lalaki in terms of retirement. Okay? Eh, sabi nung mga uh, babaeng, uh, lalaking flight attendants, no? yung sa PASAP ito, Philippine Airlines versus uh, uh, Halagenya, yung PASAP ay flight attendants union. Nagkaroon ng CBA na mga babae magre-retire at the age of 55, flight attendants, ano? at ang lalaki 60. So, sabi nung mga babaeng flight attendant, anong meron sa lalaki na pwede sila hanggang 60 at ang mga babae wala? Sabi nung mga lalaki, with all due respect, menopause na po kayo. That's a fact of life. Pero sabi ng mga babae, with all due respect na, di ba kinapos na rin kayo? <laughs> Kaya kailangan nyo na ng Pfizer. Oh. Di ba? Now, Department Order 178 ng 2017, napuri dito ng World Health Organ, uh, na, ng International Labor Organization ng Pilipinas. Kasi, nag-issue, ang order na ito sinasabi na ang mga establishment ay magbigay ng sitting break para sa male and female employees. Kasi nadiskubre na may mga malls pala na naman na hindi pinapayagang umupo ang mga empleyado, babae at lalaki, kahit na naka-break time sila. At nire-require na magsuot ng high-heeled shoes. O sabi nito, bawal i-require ang mga babae na magsuot ng high-heeled shoes kung ayaw nila. They can only do that if they want to. So in other words, voluntary. Pero pag i-require sila na magsuot, abay mahirap yan. Ha? Ako, hindi ko pa nasubukan. Pero marami nagsasabi na pag nagsuot ka ng high-heeled shoes, eh lumalabas ang mga varicose veins. Di ba? Lalo pag ka napas maro, matagal ka nakatayo. Yung mga sales ladies, ang yan, o tama, sinusukat pa yung, yung picture. Di ba? Sinusukat pa yung takong. Eh mali yan. Sabi ng Secretary Bellio, through Department Order 178, that's illegal. And many countries in the world, including the International Labor Organization, has praised the Philippines for imposing such rules on the employers. Na huwag niyong pilitin. Kasi nga, hindi lahat talaga kaya magsuot ng high-heeled shoes na yan. Di ba? Yung hirap na lang yan na maghapong suot-suot mo eh. 